Welcome back to another Saji Valley video guys, it's your girl Fuzz and for today's layout video we got the Wilderness Farm and the Hilltop Farm. Let's get into it. So first up, we've got the Wilderness Farm. So obviously it's time to completely clear the whole farm of debris in order to sleep and plan out the farm for the next day. With this farm, I chose my favorite stone flooring piece and placed them between the exits next to my farm to connect them to my farmhouse. Rule of thumb that annoyed me, don't use too many bombs on your farm. They'll leave a dug up area restricting you from placing down your floor pieces. In the midst of this, I made Robin build me a coop as I tried to plan out the farming area. I wanted to try something different with this farm as there was a big pond right in the middle of the farm. I also then sectioned off the area by the dog bowl for the sheds and in the future, ovalesks. So in theory, I wanted to border off the pond in the middle so it wasn't as much of a distraction as I planned out the placement of the sprinklers. So as you can see here, there are many gaps between the pond and the fences. I utilized these areas with scarecrows and kept a 3x2 area for future Junimo hunts to place. The sprinklers didn't fit perfectly, but I worked with this area as best as I could, placing scarecrows in spare areas, placing floor pieces under the sprinklers to match the floor and around the farm, and of course placing the sprinklers on top. I decided to use this lower east side of my farm for my farm animals, so of course I placed down a fence to match the farm and to block off the animals from roaming around, fixed the placement of my already built coop here, and then built a barn. Since this farm gave me a little bit of space to have fun on, I decided to use this little area to build a little tree farm just for the aesthetics, using grass starters placed in the corners to eventually take up the remaining space. West of the greenhouse seemed like the perfect place for bee houses. I decided to place a walkway right in the middle, placing the sprinklers on either side and of course the bee houses around this space. The remaining areas were filled with floor pieces and voila! I felt the front area needed some love the next day, so after getting two hearts with Evelyn, she'll stop by your farm to reward you with a garden plot and the recipe to make more. Although flowers planted in these garden plots will not cause nearby bee houses to produce that type of honey, you can utilize these plots for all other crops except for ancient seeds to be planted here. Saji Valley players have used these garden plots to grow mass amounts of coffee and tea, which is a recipe gifted to you from Caroline's two hard event in her sunroom located in the kitchen and Pierre's shop. If you'd like an idea for more space for your coffee and tea leaves to grow, here's an example of one of my sheds later on. This was filled with 71 garden plots and with a mixture of both seeds. I also filled in some of the space with kegs in order to make the coffee and the tea when the seeds were fully grown. Just remember that only coffee beans need to be watered every day, so be sure to water them regularly or use retaining soil as it may help to keep the soil watered overnight. I decided to place both the seeds in an alternating pattern in front of the bee houses for aesthetic purposes. Then come the sheds, placing all three sheds right next to my farmhouse fit perfectly well, so this is where I decided to build them. Then I've got tap trees that were planned on the east side of the farm. I only needed five of each tree kind, but more can be placed for your liking or you may choose to build them off your farm for more space. I also decided to build ponds on the west side of the farm, four in total. I had super cucumber, lava eel, rainbow trout and an extra space for stingray when ginger island is unlocked later on. After completing the community center it was time for the Janemo huts to be placed. It was going to be a little funky with my current setup, but I decided to place four of them in each corner of the pond fenced off area. Plus, Obelis, a replacement for Warp Totem's late game, were placed down in the areas behind the sheds, being the beach warp, the mountain warp, and the desert warp. And here was the result. I had my farm finished in summer, so my apologies that the Janemos were deciding to pick up the staff room. Here on the east side are the tap trees grown and producing syrups. On the south side of my farm was my farm animals area. I had my four ponds on the west side of the farm producing me a row. I had randomly placed my golden clock in this little extra area as I didn't have space for it anywhere else. I also then used this extra area in front of my greenhouse for lightning rods to reduce me battery packs in stormy weather. And this was the final bee house area. All the flowers were grown, the honey was ready to be picked and my coffees and tea were ready to be picked as well. My first full shed was full of coffee and tea and my second shed was full of crystallariums to duplicate minerals such as ruby and jade for the desert trader. And of course my third shed was used as just a simple storage room. 
And that is the end of the wilderness farm. On to the hilltop farm. The hilltop farm was a little bit difficult to design. There were so many elements to consider. So let me know what you think of this as I clear the farm and sleep for the next day. First, of course, was flooring. I decided that a two space flooring wouldn't take up too much space as those with this farm know how limited the space was. I then started placing sprinklers in the middle area of this farm. This was a work in progress. I made a space for sprinklers and bee houses for my artisan profession and decided to dig up the areas around the sprinklers that were already place. Next, I used this area to the west of my farm for tapped trees. It bothered me that I couldn't have them spaced the way that I wanted them, but I worked with the space the best that I could. Since I needed more oak resin for my kegs to make wines and juices, this area to the northwest side was also used for oak type trees. This is what the trees looked like when they were fully grown and I placed flooring to stop random seeds from falling next to the trees. Then it was farm animal time. To the southwest was where I was deciding to place a coop and a barn alongside a silo. This area to the east felt like an area that I could explore with some kegs. At first I decided with this layout, keeping the kegs outdoors and placing them two tiles apart for easy access. Then two sheds were decided to be placed right next to my farmhouse in front of the dog's bowl. Then a third shed finally replaced the keg area in order to fit more kegs inside. Since I had freed up more space in this area, I also then placed down three obelisks to fill in the space and had them fixed in a little pattern so I could tell them apart. And here was the result. This was the final crop area. I used a different type of flooring around the original flooring pieces in between each area. I wanted to change the color but decided to keep this idea instead. Bee houses were ready and waiting to be picked. I kept a few kegs in this west area but also had this shed filled with kegs for all my crops that I had. I tried my best to use this lower area here for crops. As you can see the sprinklers didn't cover every inch of the farm but they covered all the dug up areas as best as they could. Here are the tap trees with their sorts ready to be picked. And here is the farm animal section, enough space for other animals to enjoy themselves. This was the oak resin area ready and waiting to be used as well. As a last minute ID, I used this area to the east of my greenhouse for some coffee beans, hence the well for some quick easy access to the water. And thank you guys again for watching today's video. Why not chill by my live streams at twitch.tv forward slash fuzzerino. I hope you've been doing well in these trying times. I love you and I hope to see you next time. Take care.